address to start the session. Thank you, Dr. Asha. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all on 182nd episode of Happy Learning Masterclass web series and today joining societies Agra, Aligarh, Mathura, Meerut, Mujaffarnagar and Saharanpur. I welcome Dr. Usha Sarma, Madam. She is always kind enough to me in any of my academic activity and she has spared time to be chief guest uh, to bless the webinar. So welcome, Madam, for this uh, Happy Learning Masterclass webinar. I also welcome Dr. Saroj Singh, Madam. She, she has kindly consented to be guest of honor to bless the webinar. I also welcome Dr. Anupam Gupta, who is also one more guest of honor to bless the webinar. I also welcome Dr. Seema Hakim, Madam, today's learned speaker, and she is going to discuss very important topic, postpartum contraception. I also welcome three learned chairpersons who are going to chair that very session. Dr. Arti Gupta, Madam, from Agra, Dr. Minakshi, Madam, from Mathura, and Dr. Vartika from Mathura. I also welcome all the learned panelists who are going to take active participation in reverse panel on legal issues in female sterilization. So I welcome Dr. Jyoti Agarwal, Madam, from Mathura, Dr. Rasmi Goyal, Madam, from Mathura, Dr. Bharti Maheshwari, Madam, from Meerut, uh, Dr. Uh, Priyanka Garg, Madam, from Meerut, Dr. Manju Prabhakar, Madam, from Mujaffarnagar, Dr. Naina Miglani, Madam, from Saharanpur, Dr. Gunita Mehta, from Saharanpur, Dr. Nilam Singh, Madam, from Agra, Dr. Namrata Bhardwaj, from Aligarh, Dr. Vinita Malhotra, from Saharanpur, Dr. Rekha Maharotra from Saharanpur and Dr. Rakhi Mehrotra from Aligarh. Uh, I correct Rekha Maratha, Saharanpur. I also welcome Dr. Asha Jain, who is convener in this series since long. She is past president from Raipur OBGYN Society. So welcome Dr. Asha Jain. I also welcome two coordinator, Dr. Ritu Khanna from Varansi. She is a committee chair, food, drugs, and medical surgical equipment committee, FOXI. And she is instrumental for not only for this webinar, but for any webinar, whenever I have talked to uh, Dr. Ritu, she is always ready uh, to help me. So thank you, Ritu, for the same and welcome. She thank has you. not only instrumental in designing this program, but for execution of this program also. I also welcome Dr. Rekha Rajendra Kumar. Uh, she is a president-elect of Bengaluru OBGYN Society, and she is also one of the coordinator in this series since long. I welcome all president and secretary of joining society, that is Agra, Aligarh, Mathura, Meerut, Mujaffarnagar, and Saharanpur, and all the delegates who have joined this webinar. In era of COVID, when I started this series with three friends, uh, it was uh, my aim to meet our Foxian friends on virtual ground and to say hello and to discuss some focused topic. And till this uh, day, uh, this series is continue and it is 182nd episode of that very series. And now it is more than 7,000 members as far as Happy Learning Masterclass web series is concerned. So welcoming you all and without wasting much of your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Ritu Kanna, ma'am, to say a few words before we have the official inaugural ceremony. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Asha, for those uh, very, very kind words. And, uh, and we all know Asha is so very dynamic and a uh, very, very loving person. And we really thank you and all our best wishes with you, Dr. Asha. And first of all, my thanks to Dr. M.C. Patel, sir, for inviting me and rather giving me an opportunity to coordinate this 182 uh, Happy Learning series. And I think this is the most appreciated series that we have. And thank you also, my regards. Uh, thanks to Rekha. I think she hasn't joined us yet, who is also a very good friend of mine, very, very energetic for being a coordinator with me. And my regards to Dr. Saroj Singh, madam, and Dr. Anupam Gupta, sir for being the guest of honors and giving your blessings. And these are the blessings which we always cherish. 
Dr. Usha Sharma, Madam, you are the greatest inspiration for us. And ma'am, I tell you, I really admire you for all your grace and the amount of involvement. I think, you know, you were the first ones to be joining here. And so we worried for, you know, so you made us so efficient. I think day by day, we are learning so much still from you. So thank you, ma'am, for your gracious presence today over here, which is an inspiration always for us. Uh, Seema Hakim, ma'am, of course, a very great teacher, and we always admire her. She's so courteous and so loving. In spite of, I thought, I don't know how much of load we put on you, madam, but still, you would never say a no. So, thank you to our chairpersons, Dr. Aarti, Dr. Minakshi, Dr. Vartika, very dear to us, and for being here, and I think your presence is surely going to make this webinar so i think very very lively and all our panelists dr jyoti dr rashmi dr bharti dr priyanka dr gunita and all of you who will be joining us very shortly they are all all fantastic and specifically chosen for this panel and i'm sure that this is going to be one of the <coughs> interactive sessions that we ever had so all the best wishes again and thank you sir for involving me it's always a pleasure for me and Lots and lots of good wishes to Dr. M.C. Patel, sir, for his presidential elections. Thank you thank so you. much, sir, and thank, thank you, Pasha. Thank you, Ritu. Thank you, Ritu, ma'am. Thanks for those very, very kind words. And uh, Teeth, may I have the CVs, please? Yes, ma'am. Usha Sharma, ma'am. I welcome Dr. Usha Sharma, ma'am, who is our chief guest today for this Happy Learning Masterclass 182. She has been awarded Padma Shri by the President of India in 1985. So she has performed more than 600 lap ligations in 24 hours at a leaguer in October 1982. She was awarded a laparoscope by late Prime Minister Indra Gandhi for outstanding field work in 1982. She has very many awards, Indra Gandhi Pridarshini Award, Mahila Rath, Merat Rath, Hariom Ashram, Alembic Research Award, BC Roy National Award, Mahila Jyoti Award. I think whatever award she has received, she is much above all of them. And she remains our own dear Dr. Usha Sharma, ma'am, who's always there for all of us. Whenever we need her, whenever we have anything, any query, any help, madam is always there, just leaving aside all these hi-fi things and with us all the time. So oh, welcome you, ma'am. We are delighted to have you and would love to have words of blessings from you. Thank you very much, Asha, for your kind words. It really gives me a great pleasure to be with you all on the occasion of Happy Learning Masterclass Web Series 182, probably, today. And uh, this is being organized in association with Agra, Aligarh, Meerat, Muzaffarnagar, Mathura and Saharanpur. And of course, the program director, it is the, as it was said before, it is the baby child of Dr. M.C. Patel. And he is the program director. All of us know that he is a very hardworking, very knowledgeable person. And I can say that he is a great medical legal expert in our gynecologist. And uh, the convener of the program, Dr. Asha Jain, who is past president of Raipur Society. And then we have coordinators, ever smiling, so humble, so polite, and so hardworking, Dr. Ritu Khanna, who, who is chairperson for food, drugs, and medical legal, medical surgical equipments, Foxy. And then we have with us Dr. Rekha Kumar. She is also a coordinator and she is president-elect of Bangalore Society. Now, 
Guest of honor. Guest of honor, we have two with us. They are very dear and close to my heart because they belong to my own family. talking, I think. Oh. Dr. Sarkar Singh and Dr. Anupak Singh. Just mute Dr. Ishika. Ishika can be muted, please. Ishita, Ishita, please mute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. okay. So, uh, today we know that the first session is on postpartum contraception. And the speaker is none other than a very, very eminent and learned teacher, Dr. Seema Hakim. The session will be chaired by Dr. Arti Gupta, by Dr. Minakshi, as well as Vatika Kishore. And then the second session, as all of us know, is a reverse panel, which is being moderated by our great leader, medical legal expert, as I said, Dr. M.C. Patel. And then with him, we have got 12 very eminent and renowned gynecologists of Agra, Ligar, Meerat, Muzaffarnagar, Mathura, and Saharanpur, who will be participating in this panel. All of us know that family planning has undergone a paradigm shift. And it has emerged out as an intervention for the increasing of family planning services and to reduce maternal as well as the infant mortality. All of us know that the states which have higher contraceptive prevalence rate, they have low maternal and infant mortality. The studies show that if current unmet need for family planning is being fulfilled in the next five years, then we will be certainly avert at least 35,000 of maternal death, 1.2 million of infant death, and we will save at least about 4,500 crores of rupees. And apart from that, 6,500 crores of rupees if these safe abortion services are coupled with good and increased family planning services. We all know that Ramit. these services are Ramit. very, very important. Ramit. And that is why today we will be having a talk on postpartum contraception. We, uh, we know that these days we are giving much emphasis on postpartum contraception. And the reason is that it's really absolutely understood that nowadays there are government programs which are heading towards enhancement of institutional deliveries. And if the institutional deliveries are more, then it's very good that it is the right time when we can catch the lady and we can have good trained providers. And this is our responsibility to ensure we have good providers and where is the where we found that the case load is more, these providers are they more in number so that we can cope, they can cope up with the number of patients coming to that center. Now, postpartum IUCD, we know that is also focused to address the high and much need of spacing during postpartum period. And that is why it is very, very important to ensure these services. And we should ensure their availability their accessibility, their acceptability, and as well as their follow-up. And the other session which we are going to have, certainly that uh, legal issues in female sterilization. And here we will certainly, I would like to emphasize that these days, medical legal implications of every disease or every treatment are great due to the consumer forum and all other legal implications. And that is why it is very important for every one of us to understand the various legal issues attached or associated with any of the treatment we are giving, and especially family planning services. Because if there is any problem, these methods will go to disrepute. And so we will have 
very good deliberations today uh, on postpartum contraception by Dr. Seema Hakim. And this master class, a reverse panel discussion, which will be moderated by MC Patel. And I'm sure that the deliberation today will go a long way in updating our knowledge in both these subjects. I will really wish a great success to this program. And thank you very much, Dr. Patel, Dr. Asha, Dr. Ritu, and Dr. Rekha for giving me this opportunity to be with you all on this occasion and at the time of this prestigious program. Thank you very much. I wish every one of you a very healthy, happy, and bright future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for sparing time to bless us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam. It's always a pleasure to hear you, and we get more and more inspired. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam. Madam thank you so much. So Madam, thank Rekha you so has much joined for us your now. blessing. Yeah, we were missing you, Rekha. No, I was not able to join somehow. So I called Tirtha again and got the link again. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Rekha, would yeah. you please introduce our guest of honor? Yeah. Can I have the CV? Yes. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's my proud privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Saroj, madam. It's not very clear. So. I think Sorry. we can skip this slide. <laughs> it's One. so. There is so much noise yes, also. You can't see this slide. Okay. Dr. Uh, Asha, please proceed. There is so much noise yeah. here. I'll go to a little bit another place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so yeah. ma'am, I'm here. Head I'll professor join and soon. head, yeah. Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Principal and Dean, SN Medical College, Agra. She has many awards, gold medals starting from her undergraduate and PG exams, Best Teacher Award, Foxy Star Award, Women of the Year Award. Foxy Luminary Award. She has been the Chief Editor of the Journal of Cog, President UPSCA. We can Agai. skip. Okay. Welcome, okay. ma'am. Welcome, huh. ma'am. And we would love to hear your blessings. Thank you so much, Asha ji. Uh, a very good evening to all of you and great regards to our respected teacher, Usha ma'am. Uh, I thank Dr. M.C. Patel, sir, for making me part of this prestigious webinar. And I congratulate you, sir, for conducting these uh, happy learning uh, masterclass series so efficiently and so seriously because it's, it is 180 second. It means it's going on for such a long time. And your passion for spreading, disseminating the knowledge is really appreciable. So lots of best wishes for continuing these uh, happy learning series in future also. Uh, now, with, the, with so many dignitaries on, on platform, we see that population explosion is a major concern for our country. Despite of so many efforts being done for since our independence, still our population is going on increasing and very soon we'll cross, overtake the China. So what, where is the problem? So, because there are so many methods of contraception, there are so many things, but still our population is not being controlled. Many times it may be that it's it, it was thought that it is mainly the government doctors and government officers who have to mainly focus for the contraception. Many times uh, doctors working in public, private sector or doctors working in other specialties, they are not concerned. So it's our duty that all of us, whether working, working in public or private sector or whether working in other specialties also, and all the paramedical persons, all the society, even society as a whole, couple themselves, everyone has to join hand. Only then we can really do, do something for the population, including especially the politicians, so that law should come very soon. But as Madam has very rightly said, that postpartum period is the period which where when the couple is most vulnerable to listen us. She, and because they are ready to make a spacing or so many times the permanent method they want. And we have so many of, um, options available, whether it is people or it is 
long acting okay. reversible methods or it is mini pill there are so many options but we have to choose that for which which couple which method will be the best and for that we have to we should have the detailed knowledge the advantages disadvantages and which will be suitable for that and for that we have a speaker dr seema hakim bubbling with knowledge and experience she is going to tell us but our main duty is that every person every lady who is delivering with us whether cesarean or normal should be offered some or the other method at the time of discharge or at the time of first visit when she is coming for the follow up we should offer them some of the other method of contraception at the postpartum period and the second part which is going to be discussed regarding the legal issues that is another very important part because many times when working in the public, private sector we are afraid ki female sterilization karenge to itna mota to form aata hai bharna hai so many records we have to make so many information we have to give to cmo so that is the reason ki bahut zyada interest sab log nahi dikhate so that all those queries will be solved by dr patel sir today and let all of us join hand for contraception for promoting contraception especially the postpartum and the other methods so that we are doing something for the control of population in our country so lots of best wishes for this uh, webinar which is going to us and thank you so much dr patel for keep making me part of this and lots of best wishes for your elections which are going to be there thank you thank you very much saru singh madam uh, of course you are always with me in any of my thank academic you. activity even even in past in this age yeah. also you have joined as a faculty so okay. thank you for sparing time thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you will it be possible for dr rekha to speak no So the problem is there is so much noise here that is why I'm a bit worried. Whether that's okay, okay that's fine. Right. Yeah. You speak, Dr. Asha. I'm extremely sorry for the noise. Some work is going on in the next building. That's why. Okay. So I welcome Dr. Anupam Gupta, sir. He is presently the vice president IMA Agra. He was the president of. He is the president of Agra chapter ISOPAB. and director of agra club agra he was formerly the vp foxy in 2015 chairperson international academic exchange dr asha, committee dr asha thanks a lot let let me let me uh, uh, interrupt welcome, you welcome sir running, welcome we are running we have already passed half an hour so i would just uh, start by giving my charanpash to my godmother not everybody knows that usha aunty has been my godmother she was standing right left and center when i was being born by my my mother and we can never forget them my parents push to my two teachers here professor saroj singh ma'am and professor seema hakim ma'am who have taught me and my elder sister dr aarti my elder brother dr mc patel who has always been a big help to me and uh, madam saroj singh and dr usha sharma ma'am has already said lot about what we have today in the program so i would request the organizers to right away start so that the our audience can start listening thank you dr ritu for having me here thank you so much thank you, thank you dr asha also i would request you to please start dr mc patel i can see you now yes, all the very best for your election we all are there right behind you you have always yes. been an elder brother to all of us and now <laughs> it is our turn to, to stand up and support you right oh, left yes, and center yes. thank, you, so thank you thank you anupam for uh, sparing time you are always with me hey, i am always there with you sir i am always yes. there with you thank you thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And sir, we are still like three minutes short of half an hour. So you could have spoken more because six thirty is when we start the scientific. Now I would thank you, everyone, for attending the inauguration ceremony. I thank all our guests for blessing us, and we would start the scientific session now. Rekha, ma'am, are you up to it? in the meantime if i can get the sharing right i'll share my ppt because it sometimes it takes so much of time if possible yeah you have it go ahead okay thank you so much
Are my slides visible? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's great. So we have three chairpersons with us. We have Dr. Arthi Gupta, ma'am, who is the Secretary General of IMS Agra. She's just given up now. And she's the immediate Secretary General. She was also the President of Agra Society. We have Dr. Minakshi, ma'am, with us, who's from Mathura. She's an LMO at CHC Mathura. And we also have Vartika Kishore, Dr. Vartika Kishore, ma'am, who's the past president of Mathura Society, a very dear friend and a very enthusiastic person always with us. I would request the first chairperson to introduce the topic, the second one to introduce the speaker, and the third one to conclude the session. So over to you, Aarti, ma'am. Ma'am, you're muted. You're muted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, MC Patel, sir. And thank you, Dr. Asha, for inviting me here as a chairperson. I would like to pay my regards to Dr. Usha Sharma, ma'am, Dr. Saro Singh, ma'am, and uh, Dr. Ritu Khanna. And uh, thanks to all my colleagues who are present here. Thank you so much. And uh, as all of us know about the postpartum contraception, okay, this is the need of the art. And all of us, as Dr. Sarosi has already said, okay, all of us, especially, especially we gynecologists, should focus on the contraception devices, contraception, okay, we should advise to our patients for the contraception. I remember five years before, I am not advising the contraception to our patients. But when I used to attend the meetings and when I have a sense that okay, I should advise, so now I think there is not even a single patient to whom I did not advise the contraception. So this is the thing which can be applied to the patients only by the doctors. Till we are not encouraging them to have something post-delivery, post-abortion. This is the time when we can motivate our patients to take these contraceptions. And nowadays we are putting the IUCDs just after the delivery, at the time of the delivery, at any time. The so we can apply that and that is a very good thing which we can apply for the five years and the patient can take it for the uh, for that duration. We can go for the DIMPA also. Okay, patient is, I used to call the patients after six weeks and I used to tell them to please take some contraception. I think not all the patients but 50% patients are ready to take some contraceptions. So we can use the DIMPA also and there are so other methods also or progesterone only pills and even the LARC methods, any of these methods we can use. And till that day, jab tak ki we people are not trying our best, till that time we are unable to control our population. So I think this is one of those things which we should motivate to our patients. So thank you, thank you so much. But otherwise, the, about the postpartum contraception, Dr. Seema Hakim will tell us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Seema Hakim, and welcome for this. Uh, topic. Uh, now the I, my other chairperson will introduce you. No, no. <laughs> we can skip that step of uh, introducing me at least. <laughs> uh, so much has already been said about me and now I am getting so nervous. As everybody <laughs> knows Seema very well. Yes, ma'am. We all very of us well. know very well. Yes. Ma'am, I should have Ma'am, you have contraception ki padde ta aapke saamne bolne mein mujhe bhoat shalom a rahi hai. <laughs> oh, ma'am, thank you very much for those That's kind words. True. It's, it's the subject which is very close to my heart. Family yes, ma'am, that I know. That's why I'm getting so nervous. Ma'am, you will log in or log out? Dr. Siva, just you speak. <laughs> Before I start my topic, I would like to... Thank Dr. Patel from the bottom of my heart for giving me this opportunity. And Dr. Asha is so kind and she's been calling me so many times, Dr. Asha. And I'm really sorry. It's sometime I miss your call. Really sorry. And my dear Ritu, who was the first one. Ritu was the first one to call and say, Ki, Madam, you can tell us about this. So, yes. After hearing so much about postpartum contraception from all the expert guests, 
guest of honor. <laughs> Uh, my topic has become very easy, but right now I'll start, uh, right away I'll start my uh, topic if uh, allowed by my chairperson. Should I start? Okay, so, post, yeah, thank you. Postpartum contraception, uh, it's long been accepted as fact that the availability of family planning services saves lives. Where women have access to these services, children and family are healthier and society at large benefit. And this fact has been known by all of us and it has been spoken by so many celebrity time and again. In India, the effort on the family planning uh, dates back to the time of uh, freedom in 1947. And since then, uh, uh, progress has been made. And in 1952, India was the first country to uh, have a family plan planning program, a well-designed family planning program, and most of the services <laughs> which are being provided by our family planning program is free of cost. Uh, India is a unique country where it's been given free of cost. Since then, the effort of the government is uh, very sincere in spreading the message of family planning in the form of tickets, even five pesa tickets. When five pesa used to be uh, operational, five pesa, 15 pesa tickets used to be there. There used to be elephant ride in the uh, villages because people get attracted with the ele elephant, especially in village. So they used to spread the message of family planning through those uh, elephants in um, uh, villages and even in the um, urban area, then, uh, there were many TV programs were designed to attract people for family planning measures and there were some punchline we still remember and we saw it way back in 80s and 90s ki to bachcho ka laksh mahan ladki ladka ladki ek saman aur phir wo bus rukti hai aur bus wala kehta hai ki oh ho jagah nahi hai jagah nahi hai itne sare bachcho ke sath kisi khali bus ka intezar kare aur chut chala jata hai then there were uh, ravi shankar giving beautiful program about family planning and amitabh bachchan he spoke so well with his um, typical style about family planning so family planning program is being uh, taken very sincerely and very efficiently by Indian government, but still, as Dr. Saroj said, a lot to be done because we are facing with the uh, population explosion. So if we talk about postpartum family planning, this has three main important con component. One is prevention of unintended pregnancy. Second is closely spaced pregnancy, important thing. And through the and when when should the women be offered all these through the first twelve months following childbirth to women and their partner, and post uh, pregnancy family planning encompasses both postpartum and post abortion family planning services which are being given to the women. So, Madam Musha Sharma has already talked about unmet need of contraception. So actually, what is this unmet need? This is the percentage uh, women of reproductive age group who want no more children or they want to postpone having the next child but are not using any contraceptive method or women who are pregnant or less than six months postpartum who did not intend to become pregnant, pregnant at the time they conceived and were not using a contraceptive method are assumed to have an unmet need for modern contraception. So most of the women fall in this category where they are not being provided with the contraception for using and they come within a year or even less than that of, of their childbirth to us for either pregnancy termination or for delivery. But good news is also there. The effort of government is not going waste and it is being reflected in national health, um, national family um, programs that from uh, N F NFHS 4 to 5, there are marked uh, improvement in the unmet need of family planning that shows that efforts are, uh, are working. Then why postpartum family planning? Why are we going to talk about this uh, important topic today? 
बिकॉज पोस्टमार्टम फैमिली प्लानिंग कैन सेव मदर्स लाइफ Family planning prevents more than one third of the maternal death. This is a very important figure. So, by providing postpartum family planning, we we are indirectly preventing maternal death also, which is uh, the aim of our country. Another oh, postpartum family planning can also prevent one in ten deaths among babies if couple space their pregnancy more than two years apart. Uh, and the all these figures are coming from world health organization then short birth interval between pregnancy increase the risk of adverse maternal and infant outcome so important if we want a healthy mother and healthy child the uh, interval between two pregnancy must that is why who and most of the organization they recommend that there should be gap of at least 2 3 years between two pregnancy if we want a good outcome of pregnancy so what is the aim of postpartum contraception the basic aim is to ensure that women have a method of contraception that they can start before the risk of pregnancy returns after their childbirth and the chosen method of contraception to be started before women leaves the birthing facility so this is very important point that their method has to be chosen and has to be given to the women before she goes away why why do we uh, think in that way what are the uh, problem with the postpartum visit so the um, the problems are that as many as 40% of the women they do not return <laughs> for the 6 week postpartum visit then attendance rate are even lower in under resourced area uh, which further contribute to health disparities especially those who are coming from remote or from the village uh for rural area then uh, what are the difficulty the women are uh, they face difficulty returning for a postpartum visit because child care obligation koi bacche ko ghar mein dekhne wala nahi hai then uh, they are uh, unable to get off work either they in the if when if they are a um, uh, homemaker or housewife they have to take care of the whole family and say this, so they don't get off even a single day off they cannot get <coughs> then unstable housing laborer group then they don't get transportation even if they decide to come there's roads are poor transportation are not available so uh, then it is seen that non breastfeeding women they can ovulate as early as 25 days postpartum and 40% will ovulate by 6 weeks postpartum and 57% of the women are sexually active by 6 weeks postpartum so exposing them for a unintended or unplanned pregnancy then another uh, issue with postpartum contraception is unfilled immediate postpartum sterilization request even if they want they don't get it why because the there is a, the facility is not available operation room is not available or the surgeon who is going to do a ligation is not available or consent form sometimes they it's uh, either not available or not been filled uh, though the government of india has made it easy but still it happens sometimes that uh, the uh, requirement is not fulfilled so that that's why um, they uh, even if we want to offer them they don't get Uh, this facility of having a postpartum sterilization so what is the answer of all these problem if we are discussing about the problem we should come out with some answer also so long acting reversible contraception is one answer which can be offered to them at the time of child birth and the problem of return visit is uh, then curtailed so uh, in long acting contraception if we talk there are two main things intrauterine contraceptive devices which are more common and the other thing is implant implant is uh, less popular less used in our country but recently i have heard that in bihar people are um, using this as a uh, on a trial basis but as a regular uh, family planning method it is yet to come in our country so uh, immediate postpartum contraception uh, satisfaction rate with lark and continuation rate uh, so what is being observed and what is the research tells us that many women like 
and continue their LARP method uh, received postpartum and 74% of the women who had an IUD placed immediately postpartum did not experience an expulsion and still had their oh, IUD wow. placed at one year. 84% of the women who had an implant placed immediately postpartum still had the implant at one year. So elective discontinuation for IUD and implant are at par with the interval um, placement. That means whether we apply it in the postpartum period or we apply it in interval, the continuation rate is almost the same. So why not to go for a method which is easily available and every most of the women, they will come for the delivery in a hospital setting and at that time they can get this. Then if we talk about contraception, there are two terminology, the perfect use versus typical use. So perfect use is when the method is always used correctly. Some methods are less effective with typical use. This is when the method is not always used correctly. For example, pills. If you are giving, if the woman has to take a method herself, like pill or the use of condom, there are chances that they will not use it correctly. But if some method is being given by the healthcare provider, then all the chances that there will be a perfect use of the method. And LARC is one of the method which is, has a perfect use and its effectiveness of it, the um, use is very much high. Then if we look at the uh, CDC recommendation and most of the uh, organization like WHO uh, recommendation is also does the same for LARC. So um, most of the LARC, they have uh, either category one, mostly they are category one. Some are category two in immediate in immediately after delivery, like LNG IUD can also be used as a postpartum IUCD, uh, but immediate period may it has a um, two M uh, eligibility criteria two, which falls to one after six weeks, but it can be used if as the benefit is going to outweigh the, any risk which is there, so it can be used. Now, if we see the effectiveness of different method, sterilization is 99% effective and it's a permanent method. So if they've completed their family and they're asking for uh, permanent method, it is a good method, but it requires surgical procedure and expertise uh, are required. So that, that becomes its limitation. Then uh, LNG implant is also very effective, but it has to be... Uh, implanted and removed by a trained clinician and who gives the training it is the manufacturers who arrange the training of giving the implant uh, then uh, copper IU, IUCD especially the copper containing IUCD are mostly used um, in our country so it has to be placed and removed by trained uh, clinician uh, but birth attend uh, Trained birth attendant can also use it provided they have a adequate training in applying a postpartum IUCT. Otherwise, doctors, most of the places, doctors are uh, applying it, especially in medical college where doctors <coughs> are doing it. Then, limonorchestral IUCD can also be applied in immediately postpartum period, especially if she has a history of having a heavy menstrual bleeding. Uh, in between pregnancy, it's a very good uh, method for those women. Then um, DIMPA injection has a effectiveness of 94%, uh, but uh, injection uh, every three months has some side effects like um, intermenstrual bleeding, spotting can also be there, and then prolonged use leads to amenorrhea. And in some women, it can be troublesome. So she has to be explained about it. The lactational aminoria method is good method, but alone it may not be effective. For it to be effective, certain criteria has to be met. And what are that? Infant frequency and exclusive breastfeeding is important. No pumping, no bottle. Timing in the daytime, two feeds interval should not exceed more than four hours. And at night time, two feed interval should not exceed more than six hours. Um, and of course, more, less than six months postpartum and 
women should be aminorik. So sometimes, you know, uh, she is aminorik, but she starts ovulating and this aminoria continues and that's how they conceived in the lactational aminoria period and period of gestation. If they come late, it may not be known and then we start calculating it with the ultrasound. And then progesterone only pill is 91% effective, but every day the pill has to be taken at one time. Thanks to the newer uh, progesterone only pill, Serazet, where the uh, window period has uh, increased to 12 hours, but otherwise three hours late, uh, window period is there. Then combined patch and ring, they, they can also be used um, as a method of postpartum contraception. So uh, how uh, do we implement this postpartum family planning? So it has to be integrated with the antenatal care. So during antenatal period, the women should be counseled about contraception and she should be helped to choose a method of contraception after her childbirth. Suppose that opportunity is missed or she could not come uh, during antenatal period. So during labor also she can be offered not in late labor, but in early labor, because in late labor, decision-making becomes very difficult for women. She is in pain. So in early labor, we can do this counseling part and encourage her to use a method of contraception. That if that opportunity is also missed and less than 48 hours, still we can offer her a postpartum contraception. And if that is also missed, then interval uh, in interval period or after four weeks she can come back to us for a, a copper tea insertion or um, other method whatever she chooses then if that opportunity is also missed or that can be reinforced or we can find out whether she's using a method of contraception is the time when she comes for the immunization of the child so during that time also every healthcare provider should be trained to ask the women that whether she is she's using any method of contraception or not. And if she's already using, she needs a pat on her back that, well done, you are using a method, you are safe, you will not be, become pregnant and your child will also get a better care. So that way we can always encourage them if they are already using it. If not using it, she should be encouraged to use. Then in the waiting period, in every hospital, in waiting period, there are posters which tells them about different methods of contraception and uh, some, some posters also tells, tell them about the myth and the reality about the contraception. So all these methods really help. They are helpful in motivating women for contraception. Then there are role of other people also. It's not just the doctor or nurses who are enough to provide contraception, but other service manager, other staff who are responsible uh, for health facilities, including procurement, need to play their part in ensuring that all the opportunity for providing postpartum family planning uh, method are used. So they are also important part of the system, which uh, they help in. Um, in implementing the postpartum family planning program. So India is, as I've said, the one country which is giving everything free of cost. Use Carlo, we are there for you. We are providing you everything new. So we have a basket of contraceptive choices which are available and women can be counseled and she can be helped to choose one. Time to time, there are expansion expansion of this basket also. Like two friends, Antara and Chaya were added. Uh, then uh, progesterone only pill pilot project is going on. Then PPIUCD was introduced way back in 2010, 11, and still that uh, it's becoming more and more popular as the time is passing because it's really a very, very effective and a good method. And chances of expulsion is also not that high. So talking about what we are giving as a postpartum contraception is sterilization if the facility is available. Very good permanent method. It can be done within 48 hours of the delivery um, and or interval or like laparoscopic tubal occlusion 
is done then after abortion in first trimester we can do it with laparoscopy and later on with mini laparotomy it can be done then another method is copper tea as i have already said that it has a longer duration also but you know many women they know that copper tea is for 10 years ye 10 saal ke liye hai so if you ask them you can have a copper tea after first child but there are to 10 saal tak hum bacche nahi paida karenge so you can always tell them that it is for 10 years but you can we can remove it any time you are now uh, prepared to have your next child we can remove it so it that becomes a part of the contraception that they should be told but if she is getting it after second child then of course we can motivate that keep it because now you don't need a child and you can keep it for a longer time and it is a very effective method most of the young women they fall in cdc medical eligibility category 1 for gopati there will be those who are producing a child they they are mostly in category 1 category 3 and 4 are older women having abnormal bleeding or some malignancy most of them they will not fall under that category so that is a very good thing that we can apply it in most of the women then uh, if we talk about ppiucd we can uh, their classification is post placenta which is within 10 minutes of the delivery of the placenta after we have ruled out all the contraindication like if there is prom for more than 18 hours or she has pph which is not getting control so obviously they we, in those cases we are not going to apply then if we can apply it till 48 hours of the delivery then during cesarean section we can apply then after abortion first trimester abortion you can use it on interval iucd insertion or yeah? uh done given then uh, expulsion rate in postpartum iucd is higher than interval but when you counsel tell her that 73 to 90% of the women they are going to retain that. instead of saying that 25% will have a expulsion tell them give them a positive part of the counseling that how many percentage they are going to re retain and you can be one of them that you can retain and they should be told that when it is expelled where to look for if they expel uh, then how how will they be sure that they have expelled the device so um, so uh, as said that many women experience barrier to interval lar placement such that the advantage of immediate placental uh, uh, immediate pl placement outweigh any disadvantage which is been seen in this method so for any post uh, placental iud insertion um, important point is that the labor room staff should know what all the equipment and it should be kept ready so any time like in labor room uh, is the place where women can arrive any time whether she has chosen that family planning method or not once she arrives then only we will know so all the equipment which are essential for post placental uh, insertion that should be kept ready sterilized uh, instrument should be available and we should make sure that all the staff who are working in labor room they are trained and they can apply um post part post placental iucd uh, then another thing is the method the method should be known and we can have uh, we can display the chart showing the method so if they forget they can at least remember that we can apply it with the manual or we can apply it with the instrument we are facing a difficulty what to do where to apply pressure on the uh, uterus in the supra pubic region to straighten the uh, axis so all these things should be told to them for a proper uh fundal placement then implanton is one method i have almost zero i uh, i have never seen it it been applied because it was never applied i worked in uh, as a resident in bhu that time it was not that popular also but here also in aligarh we don't apply i do not have any personal experience but what all uh, i can say that whenever we talk about learning how to put this implant it is the manufacturer responsibility to give the training of putting in a implant and then its removal that proper training should be there and then only it can be used 
as I have no experience, I can't say that what, what to tell to the patient about implanon and um, how to counsel. But um, I'm sure if we get an opportunity and we get a training, we can also do, uh, start doing it. Uh, then uh, TIPPA is one method which is again very popular in most of the places in medical colleges. They are um, the method which is being used. But what I have seen in my personal experience that women get worried for two things. One is intermenstrual bleeding and another is prolonged amenorrhea. But if they know that these are the problems which you can have, then they are more compliant for its use. So um, they, they can choose, you can explain to them and it's their choice. Many women, they will come and say that we need three injection ka hi so that means they've heard about it and they know. And once we we also tell them that what is expected with this, it is a good method of family planning, but sometimes you can have, but they are never very troublesome. If you have amenorrhea and you have taken the injection on time, let's very, uh, no chance that you are you can be pregnant in that situation. And a pregnancy test can also tell you that whether you are pregnant or not. But most of the amenorrhea are, uh, not because of pregnancy, it's because of the um, contraceptive method that they have amenorrhea. The progesterone only pill, um, yeah, we are using Ceracet, um, and that is patient's uh, satisfaction is also good, provided they remember to take it. Some patients are very forgetful and they don't remember, so this can this cannot be a good choice for them. Then another like this. Uh, as the, the tablet has to be taken every day, they can fix a time in the afternoon or evening time. They can fix a time where they take at least four hours before falling uh, to sleep or going to bed. They should consume this tablet. So they can fix a time every day, the same time if they take and continuous. It has a 28 tablet, so continuous, no pill free interval, no gap, like in combined contraceptive pill, where seven days gap is to be given, but here there is no gap that is there. So 28 days they have to consume the pill. So uh, more habit forming uh, with the progesterone only pill is there. So to uh, find, finally uh, summarize, women should be counseled prenatally about all postpartum contraceptive option, including Immediate postpartum LARP method. Immediate postpartum LARP should be offered as a safe and effective option for postpartum contraception. And for us, it is mostly copper tea. LARP method has few contraindications and almost all women are eligible for implant and IUDs. And counseling should include benefits and limitation of immediate postpartum uh, long-acting contraceptive. We only talk about benefit and no limitation. That is also not a good thing. So whatever limitation is there, we should always disclose it to our client. So, and despite higher expulsion rate, research strongly suggests the superiority of immediate placement in reduction of unintended pregnancy. <laughs> Women considering immediate postpartum contraceptive large should be counseled that evidence has not shown a negative effect on breastfeeding outcome and the immediate postpartum period can be particularly favorable time for IUD or implant insertion. I'll end my talk by showing you the new communication campaign uh, and very interesting uh, programs. It, you watch it on YouTube and you really enjoy watching those programs which has been made and uh, especially the celebrity when they are talking about contraception and I love the Amitabh Bachchan uh, his typical UP style like I am I am from Eastern UP so I love his way of talking because we grew up this time in that type of atmosphere where everyone used to talk like this so um, when you have free time you can also see those YouTube um, programs on family planning, which are, re which are really, really interesting. With that, thank you very much for the opportunity and I'll stop sharing my screen so that we... Yeah. Yes, thank you, Seema, ma'am. It was an excellent 
talk and you always teach us so many things so interestingly ma'am you really talked about unmet need and the gaps which we encounter in our practice about locks and uh, about all the postpartum uh, contraception their effectiveness which is more than 90% and in case of PPIUCDs more than 99% and they fall in category 1 and ma'am you spoke very nicely about the counseling and not to miss any opportunity during antenatal natal or during when a female comes for immunization of the child and to display ic material in hospital premises and regarding implants ma'am when i was doing my pg in icmr project under icmr project we got little opportunity to see how implants were uh, you know put in uh, forearms so that is what little experience we have yes uh, we have tall words like usha ma'am saroj ma'am so they can share their experiences if uh, uh, you know anywhere it is being used or in about, uh, times to come but it was an uh, excellent talk ma'am and i thank you. at the outset thank patel you. sir asha ma'am and ritu ma'am to have me here thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much seema ma'am you were very elaborate and very much on time so thank you thank you very much as a convener for me that's so important to keep everything <laughs> going on time and i'm really very very grateful also very grateful to all our chair persons who have been here with us and i hope you will stay on for the panel if you have the time or if you are busy you can just keep your earphones and move about so i would be happy to have you all here even for the panel and thank you mc sir patel sir yes you can very well proceed thank you sir thank you so thank you very much welcome bharti ma'am now we start the panel and the topic is female sterilization it's a reverse panel it is my pleasure to introduce mc patel sir i know he doesn't need any introduction but it's always nice to remind ourselves for the person we are all rooting for so he is a consultant obstetrician gynecologist and medical legal counselor vp proxy 2018 organizing secretary icog 2017 he was the chairperson ethics and medical legal committee proxy 2011 to 13 honorary secretary sogo organizing chairperson mmcon he has done many many conferences and he is still the backbone of all of the things that go on in gujarat other than that he has been going to the northeast for um uh, what should i say it's work which is voluntary and which is free for more than a week every year for 21 years to give help checkups to the underprivileged patients over there and it's 21 years and this is the 182nd webinar so what i can say is dr mc patel sir your name is consistency so that is mm -hmm. one thing that he has in abundance and i need to learn from him how he goes on doing it so this is a, an appeal video from mc patel sir for all the dignitaries present here that's me i've been introduced शुभम करो तो कल्याण आरोग्यम सुख संपदम एक इंच रिस्पेक्टेड सीनियर्स एंड वी आर कटिंग सर्विंग फॉक्सी फॉर इयर्स टुगेदर ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस डे विद फोल्डेड हैंड्स एंड डाउन हेड आई सीक योर गाइडेंस ब्लेसिंग्स एंड सपोर्ट टू एंडोर्स माय कैंडिडेचर फॉर द पोस्ट ऑफ फॉक्सी प्रेसिडेंट year 2026 election year 2024 consistently working for foxy 
and trying to visit even a smaller societies and to assist our common foxian friends in any given situation i have tried to serve foxy i assure to serve foxy in the same way with the same zeal and enthusiasm path ka antim lakshya nahi sihasan chadte jana liye sabhi ko saath aage hai badhte jana with that appeal we start the panel it's the legal issues in female sterilization these are our respected panelists and i will be introducing them one by one as they come along it is my request dr priyanka garg the secretary of merit society has very high grade fever and she will not be able to join us so if anybody else from merit can take her question so i would like to introduce sir before i start the panel officially i would like to ask you is this a topic that is worth discussing do we need to discuss sterilization naturally uh, not only female sterilization legal issue but uh, nowadays as far as medical legal consequences are concerned they are increasing day by day and we gynecologists friend rank first as far as this uh, if you go with statistic of medical legal consequences and this female sterilization operation uh, it is a very important surgery in our day to day practice but it has its own uh, some legal issues also and that is why it is very much necessary to know uh, this uh, about all this legal issues as far as uh, female sterilization operation is concerned yes thank you sir we have dr jyoti agrawal ma'am with us who is the president of mathura obstetric gynec society she loves dancing and painting and see how well she has painted her hands so welcome jyoti ma'am over to you good evening hello ma'am good evening in regards to all of you my question uh, today is who can give consent for tubal tubal canalization and is consent of husband mandatory so in any surgery including female sterilization if patient is major if patient is mentally sound then she can only give consent on her behalf so for female sterilization uh, it is also a say as far as consent of spouse is required there are two views in one of the cases supreme court has very specifically mentioned that when you are going to go for female sterilization you are putting full stop on the reproductive capacity i mean as far as uh, this uh, uh, sterilization part is concerned uh so consent of spouse is required as per nmc guideline it is also required but at the same time there are so many uh, circular in some uh, respective state rather that consent of spouse is not required so if you have government circular and if you are following government circular then consent of spouse is not required if there is no guideline in that very particular state then consent of spouse should be taken as per guideline from nmc and from supreme court thank yes, you sir thank you sir yes. so that doesn't leave us anywhere we are still confused whether to take no, no, or no, not no no not at all confused exactly. no no we, wherever you practice in your very state if there is circular from government that consent of spouse is not required Uh, it, it is given in manual on part of government so if it is there if you have not taken consent doesn't matter if there is no guideline or circular on part of that uh, like the state government of respective state then you have to go for consent of spouse it is very clear okay thank you sir thank you dr jyoti 
Uh, so we we have doctor. Yeah, yes. Ma'am, we'll take them at the end. You okay, know, in the okay, open session, we'll take all the questions. Okay, ma'am. So okay. we have Dr. Rashmi Goel, ma'am, who's the secretary of Mathura Society. And she sends us all holy greetings. Rang Bhari Holi Ka. Thank you. Dr. Rashmi? Dr. Rashmi, are you there? Dr. Vartika, would you take that question, please? Ma'am, may I ask? Uh, who's there? Ma'am, Dr. Jyoti. Go ahead and ask anyone. Anyone can ask, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, sir, uh, can female sterilization be done with cesarean section? How will you counsel and take consent for this? What is to Foxy uniform consent for female sterilization operation? Yes. As far as female sterilization with lower segment cesarean section is concerned, Legally, no one can stop you doing female sterilization operation with cesarean injection. But being a national program, as far as this female sterilization is concerned, if at all some complications happens, even if it is due to uh, uh, cesarean injection or in very few conditions, if there is death, then it will be special inquiry if female sterilization operation is done. So few of our friends are afraid to go for female sterilization operation with cesarean injection because if at all any complication, if at all any uh, death, then it becomes a hot topic of discussion in parliament also and in newspaper also. So of course we can go with uh, sterilization operation with cesarean injection. There is uh, no uh, restriction, but you should be very careful at the time of taking this operation and proper counseling is very much important. So when you take counseling uh, before going for female sterilization, usually it should be in a vernacular language or language which patient can understand. And we have to offer all the methods of contraception. Uh, Seema Madam has very nicely discussed all the method of contraception as far as uh, temporary methods are concerned. So at the time of counseling, we have to offer all those temporary methods also and female sterilization. And we have to mention that it is permanent operation. And we have also uh, explained about probable complications related to female sterilization. Say, for example, possibility of ectopic pregnancy. Of course, it is there, but it should of law and by so many of the courts, uh, failure rate of 3 to 4 per 1000 female sterilization operations is accepted. But we should explain to the patient uh, at the time of counseling. Uh, we should also explain her there is possibility of recanalization natural. So we have to mention that also. Many times patient will ask if at all it is needed then can this operation be open? In their language, they will say like this. So we have to explain again that we can go with uh, tubal canalization again, but 100% guarantee cannot be given. Yeah, we can offer these services if at all it is required with limited success rate. So all the important points we have to mention uh, to the uh, at the time of counseling. As far as uh, Foxy uniform consent is concerned. With three medical legal experts, Dr. Dilip Falke from Pune, Dr. Nikhil Datar from Mumbai, and myself, Dr. M.C. Patel from Ahmedabad, we have prepared 30 different consent. And it is available on Foxy website. So say for example, cesarean section, hysterectomy, abdominal, vaginal, endoscopy, termination of pregnancy, uh, medical method, surgical method, female sterilization, then um, uh, tightening, uh, uh, concern for blood transfusion, concern for anesthesia at the time of transferring patient to higher center. So all concerns are available. But as far as female sterilization uh, consent is concerned, then we have prepared 
concern in two parts or uh, almost all concerns are prepared in two parts part one is information so we have given different sub eight uh, subheadings and in that very heading we have given all the information related to female cell division say for example name of procedure or name of surgery we will mention female sterilization meaning what is the meaning of female sterilization what is the indication what is the alternative methods uh, uh, if patient is not ready to give consent then what is the risk of refusal so that way we have mentioned each and everything and one more point uh, probable complications so uh, complication of anesthesia possibility of infection possibility of failure possibility of ectopic pregnancy just i mentioned prior also everything we have mentioned in that part and part 2 is undertaking so whatever we have mentioned in part 1 patient will go uh, with undertaking that she agree with all this and whatever written above was explained to me in language which i could understand and then after i have given my consent and two witnesses one witness in favor of patient one witness in favor of uh, hospital and uh, a signature of doctor is also must so this is uniform consent on foxy uh, website it is available you can utilize but as far as government guideline and government manual related to female sterilization operation is concerned there is prescribed consent also so we can go with that consent also but we will have to see if any important point is missing in that very consent uh, uh, given by government then we uh, it is always better to go with two consent one which is available on foxy website and which is very much in informed consent and one as per government guideline we can go like this yes next thank you sir next we have dr professor bharti maheshwari ma'am we all know she was the mtp committee chairperson did ex extensive work she is going for vice president north zone this year welcome dr bharti and these are her hobbies so academics painting music and making friends over to you bharti ma'am good evening everyone and namaste uh, dr mc patel sir so nice Welcome. to uh, yeah. see you in this uh, master class webinar and uh, i have attend your many webinars and it is always very informative and uh, my good evenings to legend uh, professor padmashri dr usha sharma madam dr seema and all seniors in this webinar so as we are talking about the ligation so we all know sterilization ligation tubex means these all terms we use for the sterilization of the female so these are uh, very important and uh, we practice it but now uh, today's era when we have options for long term contraception and many things so um, because of sometimes due to some medical legal issues we hesitate to uh, do these uh, practices so this is very informative webinar because we can uh, learn that how we should go through so sir my one important issue is that the uh, female sterilization is such a recommended operation and very uh, useful information then still uh, can we have litigation for doing the female sterilization kariye potent level kariye and if it is so likhe. then uh, what are the areas where litigation can be uh, occurs and how we can prevent it and is there any family insurance scheme for doing only family planning services if it yes. is so then please inform us yes. so as far as uh, uh, first question is concerned litigations are very common related to female sterilization because usually they are young patient and any adverse outcome is not accepted to patient or patient party this is elective procedure usually there are only very few condition medical condition where female sterilization operation could be advised otherwise it is elective procedure and it is uh, uh, just i mentioned in young patient and patient and relative are never ready to accept any adverse outcome so uh, that is why these are very common if at all something goes wrong with female sterilization uh, possibility of litigation so there are potential cases as far as litigations are concerned 
and as far as areas related to litigation in female sterilization operation is concerned very first allegation and common allegation it was done without my consent usually we take consent we take uh, go with consent but many a time few of our boxing friend miss to take consent of patient and they take consent of any relative who is accompanying the patient and they could uh, could be in trouble in this type of situation so consent of patient if patient is major and mentally sound is very much must so th that is one area without consent any complications related to tubal uh, sterilization surgery then it is also one more area one more area is failure of a tubal uh, sterilization operation because we know in 3 to 4 patients per uh, uh, 1000 surgery it could be natural recanalization and uh, 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 operation may go fail so this is also one more area and one more area death of patient of course it is very rare if it is a properly done female sterilization operation but even then if at all it happens then it becomes uh, area for litigation as far as uh, family planning insurance scheme is concerned government has a tie up with uh, icic lombard as far as insurance uh, part is concerned so in event of death if it occurs in less than 7 days post operative then compensation of rupees 2 lakhs is awarded to relative of the patient and if it is more than 8 days and still less than 30 days then compensation of 50000 is awarded in any case of failure 25000 in any case of complication 25000 or actual expense whichever is less so these are uh, some uh, uh, area as far as insurance part is concerned but it is available with government hospital of course but in private hospital if one wants to go with this family planning insurance scheme and if he is interested to avail this uh, benefit to a patient then that very hospital should be m panel with government and if hospital is m panel then this uh, advantage of insurance scheme can be extended to that private hospital also thank you yes. sir thank you yes. Yes. yes next dr asha unmute yourself okay actually I had to run away my patient post op was getting breathless so missed it that's dr priyanka gar from merit obstetric gynecology society she has fever today she is the secretary so over to you bharti ma'am you'll have to take this as well yes so um uh, dr mc patel sir we want to ask can we perform laparoscopic tubal lig ligation along with mtp or a spontaneous abortion and next thing are there any absolute contraindication for doing uh, ligation with mtp or during cesarean if one thing that next pregnancy is dangerous for patient can one perform tubal ligation if yes then how consent should be taken and what action should be taken to prevent litigation so tubal ligation uh, i mean laparoscopic tubal ligation with mtp so of course we can go with uh, mtp and tubal ligation if it is first trimester termination otherwise in second trimester termination it is not recommended we have to avoid uh, injury to uh, gravid uterus so uh, we should be very careful for that as far as spontaneous abortion is concerned so if patient is healthy if there is no sign of any sepsis and if it is uh, 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 we can investigate patient for that then we can go uh, with the tubal ligation uh, in that very uh, case uh, as far as laparoscopic part is concerned and second question is are there any absolute contraindication as yes, there is no uh, absolute contraindication as far as uh, female sterilization operation is concerned but there could be some uh, relative contraindication say for example uh, if patient is too much obese then uh, it could be co uh, contraindication but we have other alternative also we may go with a general anesthesia or so after investigating patient and if patient is fit for anesthesia then we can go with this 
As far as psychiatrist disorders are concerned, patient is major but she is not mentally sound or mentally retarded or having some psychiatric uh, disorders and female sterilization uh, is to be considered. In this situation, we have uh, to have certificate from psychiatrist uh, about her uh, uh, mental health. And if certificate is there, then we can very well go with uh, uh, surgery. Allergy to uh, anesthetic agent. Many a times, because previously it was recommended to uh, do female sterilization in local anesthesia. So if patient is sensitive to that very drug, then it could be a relative contraindication. But we may have another options and we can very well go with that. Physical illness, if patient is not well, then naturally it is contraindication. But when patient becomes fit, then we can uh, go with female sterilization operation. And at par, as far as some postpartum conditions are concerned, if it is a case of purpural sepsis, if it is a history of uh, p prom uh, more than 24 hours, if, if she is a case of pre severe preeclampsia or eclampsia and a history of APH, PPH, if hemoglobin is less than 8, uh, uh, any trauma to genital tract uh, and postpartum psychosis, these are some contraindications. Once we clear all this condition, we can very well go with female sterilization operation. Yes, next. Thank you, sir. Thank yes. you. And Dr. Asha, uh, th congratulations to you also. You are moderating so well and taking care of everything. So really, thank you. And uh, thank you. And I will uh, not coming for the VP in this year, but definitely will come in the future. I will inform all of you and need your support. You're not coming this year? <laughs> no, no, I'm not in this year. Okay. All in the near best, future, Bharti definitely in future I also. will come, but not in this year. Any, we, we have supported Bharti in past also. And we will Thank support you. her in future also. Thank you. Thank you. Whenever, whenever she comes. And ma'am, I'll be going for food drug committee. Rita yes. ma'am is here. I need everybody's blessings for that. I, I wish. You are very hardworking, very uh, sincere person. We wish uh, all the best for you, Dr. Asha. Thank and you. we all will support you, definitely. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So now we proceed further. And this is Dr. Manju Baprabhakar, ma'am. She is the president of Muzaffar Nagar Society. She loves dancing. And you can see Sari Mudraye Dekhi. So. And she is the faculty at my medical college also. She is the associate professor at Muzaffar Nagar Medical College also. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm. but she, this is so beautiful. So, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Asha. Thank you, Dr. Patel and uh, all the dignitaries and uh, our own Dr. Bharti Maheshwari. And uh, I thank uh, Dr. Usha Sharma ma'am also for all her blessings throughout my career. Uh, for uh, me, uh, today's question for you, uh, Dr. Patel, as you have yes. already said about the sterilization <clears throat> operation and uh, the litigations and everything about that. So I would like to ask you that uh, what type of anesthesia should be given to the patient uh, when we are performing this uh, sterilization operation and what are the mandatory investigations which should be done before going for the procedure? So as far as anesthesia is concerned, I uh, little mentioned prior also, uh, it was recommended to go with local anesthesia and to go with female sterilization operation. But it was not absolute that we should go with local only because as per condition of the patient, because many a time patient is very fussy, she is not willing to go with local anesthesia, then we can choose any other anesthesia of uh, uh, her choice or a choice of our anesthesia, anesthesiologist. So we can go with this. As far as mandatory investigations are concerned, it is recommended that hemoglobin should be at least more than 8. Patients should not have diabetes also. So urine sugar and uh, uh, urine albumin, etc. we should uh, do. And very important part is fitness certificate. So if you are having your own nursing home, you can also uh, uh, give certificate that patient is fit for uh, going for female sterilization operation. 
or medical officer can also certify that patient is fit for surgery. So this kind of investigation and certificate of fitness is very much recommended in government menu. So it is required. Sir, I would like to ask you one yes, thing more yes, that yes. if we are not going for a laparoscopic uh, sterilization operation, we are going mm -hmm. for a mini lap ligation. Mm -hmm. In that case also, you will uh, suggest to have uh, only the local anesthesia or the spinal anesthesia in that case. No, no, no. As per government manual, local anesthesia is suggested. It is to be preferred, but it is not absolute that we have to go with local anesthesia only. We can go with an, an other anesthesia also as per demand of situation. Say, for example, just I mentioned that patient is, if patient is too obese and it is very difficult to go in local anesthesia, we can go with an, any other alternative as far as anesthesia part is concerned. But in, in eye of law, it is very clear. Whatever you do, you should be in a position to justify your action. Why you selected that very anesthesia, you should have some reason to believe, some reason to establish that uh, this was the reason and that is why we prefer this NSH. Do we need, uh, need to do the renal function test also in the case we are going for tubal sterilization or not? So in routine it is not recommended but if at all there is any history of hypertension or diabetes or so then we have to go with all necessary investigation related to renal function, liver function etc. Otherwise, Along. usually government recommendation, the recommendation for CVC, that is HB, a total count, etc. And urine routine microscopy. And no viral markers? Pardon? What about viral markers? So like it, hepatitis B, C and HIV? Ne, ne, ne. HIV and HBS, AC, uh, AG should be recommended for our safety also. Because if at all patient is having HBS, AG positive, or mm -hmm. then person who is doing is at uh, uh, danger. So if we know that patient is having this test positive, then we should be very careful. So that is why we can uh, uh, recommend. But uh, as far as this uh, protocol on part of government is concerned, it, it is not mentioned that it is mandatory to go for, but it is always advised. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, yes. Next we have sir Dr. Next we have Dr. Naina Miglani ma'am who is the director of Dayavati Hospital at Saharanpur. She loves to do gardening and dancing but she didn't share photographs. So I don't know if she is here. I didn't see her. Dr. Naina is not here. So Gunita ma'am would you please take this? Yes sure ma'am. At the outset, thank you so much, Asha ma'am and MC Patel sir, for giving Saharanpur an opportunity to participate in this illustrious panel. Uh, sir, uh, I wanted to ask that which method of tubal ligation is recommended in mini lab and which suture material can be used for the same? So, as per government guideline, as far as mini lab part is concerned, uh, abdominal route is also recommended. And in past, now it is, I, I don't think anybody is doing, but in past, vaginal route was also uh, preferred by few of our senior gynecologists as far as female uh, tubal ligation part is concerned. As far as suture material is concerned, uh, 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 chromic catgut was uh, recommended in uh, those days, but nowadays few of our friends are also go with uh, 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 Vicryl. 2-0 or 1-0 or so. So, uh, this is the recommendation. Uh, and sir, uh, can you also comment that uh, when we are do doing laparoscopic tubal ligation, mm -hmm. can we use air for uh, insufflation of the abdomen? And uh, can cautery be used on a very sensitive uh, structure like fallopian tube? No, usually cautery is not recommended in government manual also. It is phallus, I mean ring is uh, recommended. Yes, sir. And sir, can we use air for insufflation while doing uh, lab? No, 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 
CO2 should all uh, should always always be preferred. Uh, air is not recommended. Previously, it was done because I have also done so many laparoscopic sterilization operation in past when I was with government. Uh, 40, 50 surgery per day. I used to uh, uh, go. In in those days, we were using air, but nowadays CO2 is preferred. Because if at all something goes wrong, and if there is allegation on part of prosecution that CO2 was not used, then it will be difficult for us to uh, convince court why we went with air and why we didn't use for CO2. So it is always preferred to go with a standard method which is prevailing nowadays. So, sir, this was the official question for Gunita Ma'am, who is the secretary of Saharanpur Society. Yes. yes. She reads books. She reads books. And these are her favorite books, Forest of Enchantment and The Last Queen. So, <laughs> thank you, Ma'am, for you. being there with us. <clears throat> thank you so much, Ma'am, for giving this opportunity to Saharanpur. Okay. So, now we also have Dr. Neelam Singh, Ma'am, who's a assistant professor at SNMC Agra and she loves reading and writing. So over to you Neelam ma'am. Thank you so much sir and ma'am for giving me the opportunity to participate in the wonderful panel and my question is if you were called to a nursing home owned by BMS their non-doctor owner to perform sterilization and there is a death then who is called for inquiry, the owner or the operating surgeon? Any guidelines from the government, sir? Yes. So, <clears throat> primary responsibility mm -hmm. is always on treating doctor. So, who has operated will also be called for inquiry. And when it has happened, in that very nursing home, owner will also be uh, made a party. So, it, it will be joint uh, litigation against uh, owner and uh, operating surgeon. But that is always up to patient party. If patient party is willing to uh, make, make uh, operating surgeon only a party, then they may go with uh, surgeon. And if they are interested to go with both, then they can go with both. As far as government guideline is concerned, it, there is not absolute guideline that who should be called for inquiry or so. That is up to patient whom they have made party. And that is up to uh, investigating team, say for example, if it is referred to medical board, then medical board can invite operating surgeon or owner even to come to conclusion, they can uh, invite uh, 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 your staff also operate, uh, in operation theater who is helping. So assistant surgeon or sister or so for some questions to come to conclusion, what was the reason for death and who is responsible or was there any prima facie negligence on part of operating surgeon? So for that, they are called for investigation. Thank you, sir. Yes. We yes, all next. know Namrata Ma'am, who is the secretary of Aligarh Society. She loves dancing and she's a trained classical musician. But I don't see her here. So if anybody from Aligarh or anyone could take this question, please. Anybody may please take the question. Uh, good evening, ma'am. May I take the question, ma'am? Yes, yes. Please proceed, Dr. Aki. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Patel, sir, for making the complexities of uh, tubectomy so easy to us. And uh, the question is, can we perform tubal ligation on a woman of any age? And uh, can we perform tubal ligation on an unmarried woman? And also, can we perform tubal ligation on a married but not having any living issue? So it is very clear uh, as far as government guidelines are concerned. Uh, we can perform tubal ligation operation of uh, age 22 to 49. So less than 22 is not recommended. More than 49 is also not recommended. As far as unmarried woman is concerned, we cannot uh, go with uh, sterilization operation in unmarried woman. Patient should be married or ever married. If she is married and divorced or judicial separation, 
uh, then we can very or in, in in event of death of husband or so so it, it, these are some situation otherwise in unmarried woman we cannot go with uh, uh, this type of operation and as far as uh, third question is can we perform tubal ligation on married woman but not having child no it is also not uh, recommended because a patient should have at least one child of uh, uh, more than one year of age but if it is medically indicated then uh, this is not uh, uh, required uh, and one can go with a sterilization operation but in again in this situation you will have to justify that it was medically indicated and that is why we have uh, gone with a female sterilization thank you sir Dr. Vinita Mehrotra, Malhotra ma'am, head scientific team, Saharanpur Obstetric Gynec Society. She swims and she plays chess. Over to you, Vinita ma'am. Uh, good evening, uh, sir, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my question for sir is, if a mother come with her daughter, 22 years old, uh, mentally challenged, can we do female sterilization operation? Oh, and is there any provision for required space, facilities, equipments, and essential drugs? So, the second part I would take first. As far as uh, uh, this requirement of uh, facilities, equipment, and essential drugs are concerned, all this uh, guideline given in government manual as per WHO and Government of India recommendation. But as far as facilities and instruments are concerned, if you are running a nursing home, and where you are doing cesarean section, hysterectomy, etc. So it is believed that you are well equipped with all the instrument where you can go with female sterilization operation. As far as laparoscopic route is concerned, it is recommended that you can go with laparoscopic uh, tubal uh, ligation where facility of uh, laparotomy is there. If at all any complications happens during surgery, and if laparotomy is to be done, then we should have all the facility to go with laparotomy. So these are some recommendations as far as government part is concerned. And as far as essential drugs are concerned, naturally all these drugs which are uh, very much necessary to deal with any minor or major surgery we should have. And that way we can go with that. As far as first question is concerned, very interesting. Mother comes with daughter. 22 years and mentally challenged because this type of uh, situation occurs and many a time uh, mother comes with her daughter uh, sir she is now menstruating and she is mentally retarded and we are worried if somebody take uh, misadvantage and we want to go for female sterilization operation in this type of situation uh, one couple went to honorable high court seeking permission for female sterilization operation with her uh, daughter who was mentally challenged. And government, I mean, uh, uh, Honorable High Court didn't permit, saying that if she were, were very normal and if she were earning a lot, good, then you, you would have, this family and yourself would have taken advantage of that. Now she is mentally challenged and you have to take her personal hygienic care at the time of menstrual cycle. And if you are worried of uh, her probable pregnancy, if she is misused by somebody, then permission was not granted. But uh, uh, on the other side, if there is a certificate from two psychiatrists that she is totally mentally retarded and she is unable to take her personal uh, care during menstruation or to avoid this type of unwanted pregnancy or so, we can consider female sterilization operation. But certificate from psychiatrist is very much must and it should be to be on safer side from two different psychiatrists. Uh, my, one more question, sir. Um, yes. yes. Uh, when we document uh, uh, female sterilization, uh, should mm -hmm. we mention the uh, technique of uh, uh, sterilization life by which we did that? Like Pomroy or naturally in, in in any patient in discharge guard, whatever treatment we have given to the patient, we mention. Say for example, lower segment, cesarean section under spinal anesthesia. 
So that way we have to mention bilateral tubal ligation by modified Pomeroy method or whichever method you have adapted or say for example uh, laparoscopy or so under which NSCI you uh, went with uh, sterilization operation. It is always better to mention in uh, discharge card. And in, in, the, in the same time, in discharge card, we have to give all the instruction also about diet to be taken, medicine to be taken, uh, exercise, follow-up. And in that very discharge card, we have to mention one instruction. If at all you miss your period, you are advised to report hospital immediately. Because we know that there is a chance of failure. Of course, it is rare, three to four in um, uh, per 1,000 ca cases. But still, at the time of discharge, if you have mentioned in discharge card, it shows our consent to take utmost care of our patient. So these are some recommendations. Uh, by one, uh, yes. uh, and female sterilization in, in mentally handicapped uh, girls. Uh, we can use other method of contraceptions. Yes, 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 we can. So first we have to counsel parents that these are some alternatives available. So it is not there we should go for female sterilization operation only. And if they are uh, convinced, then we can uh, advise that also. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So the next is Dr. Rekha Maratha, who is the past president of Saharanpur Society. Dr. Rekha, are you there? Yes, she is. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Rekha, ma'am, is there. Yeah, good evening, all. Uh, before putting up my question, I would uh, hurriedly like to wish you, sir, Dr. M.C. Patel, sir, the very best for the next election for the post of President Foxy. And we hope, pray, and wish that with you as our president, a new thank era would begin. And if yes, I use the word Ram Rajya, which is so much being talked these days, uh, <laughs> it won't be an exaggeration where there'll be uh, there'll be a hope for a positive change. And also, Dr. Asha Jain, I'm so fond of you. You are so meticulous in your work. And I have seen you working in SFM also uh, very actively. So thank you for giving this opportunity. And I appreciate you a lot. Now, sir, uh, my question is, who can perform a female sterilization operation, number one? And number two is, is empanelment compulsory? And number three, are the Government of India guidelines uh, binding on us? Yes. So, as far as who can perform female sterilization operation, as far as gynecologists who is having postgraduate degree, diploma or DNB in OBGYN can perform mini lab that is abdominal root or so. And if he or she is trained in laparoscopy, then they can go with a laparoscopy operation also. Other specialty, say for example, general surgeon, if they are trained in uh, laparoscopy, then they can go with laparoscopy sterilization operation also. For any MBBS uh, graduate, if they are trained for mini lap uh, surgery, then they can go for mini lap surgery as per tubal sterilization operation is concerned. Empanelment is not compulsory, but if you want to take advantage of that insurance scheme in event of complication, in event of failure, or in event of death, then your nursing home should be empaneled with government. So it is required. And as far as government guideline is concerned, not for female sterilization, but wherever there is guideline on part of government, on part of FOXI or ICOG or RCOG, it is always better to uh, practice or to uh, deal with patient as per standard protocols and guidelines given by these institutions. Because if you have treated patient as per standard guideline, standard protocol, and something goes wrong, then you, you could be saved. And if you have not followed a guideline or pro protocol, then it will be very difficult in court of law also to face the situation. So it is always advised to go with guidance. Thank you. Sir, actually, there is a little bit of clarification. Yes. This empanelment could be of the you know nursing home license. That is yes. one thing. Yes. But yes. other than nursing home license, which is compulsory, do we have to take a separate TT? So, uh, TT 
empanelment. In our yes. state, we have to take a TT empanelment because if we don't take it, we cannot issue TT certificate. Yeah. So, if it is a guideline on part of that respective state, then naturally we have to follow those guidelines. Means here we are not allowed to do a tubectomy unless our center is recognized. And yes. we have that certificate that yes, your center is so recognized. So if it is recommended on part of government, then you have to strictly follow that guideline. And you have to be independent. But as far as the insurance part is concerned, uh, that is why I clarify. So when government went with uh, in, uh, this empanelment with ICIC Lombard, it was mentioned that nursing home, which is M panel with government, uh, will only be uh, given benefit of this scheme. And, and you, all sir. this scheme, scheme was produced in, uh, by government uh, before Supreme Court in 2005. And all those guidelines and this uh, insurance scheme uh, criteria, etc., were passed in Supreme Court and it is gazetted in government, I mean, government gazette also notified. Sir, Dr. Rakhi has already been asking the questions, yes. but you will love to see her photographs. Very good. See the garden and her, you know, what she loves to do is yoga, gardening, and she keeps on searching for healthy food options. So you can see that here. Yes, very good. When we go to Saharanpur, I think so we I, can I, invite ourselves I, to I, breakfast or something. I visited Saharanpur, but I was in hurry that day. Otherwise, I would <laughs> love to visit. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for such lovely words, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, sir, my question is, please discuss some cases about the um, operations done without taking consent and uh, what are the legal issues if failure occurs after the operation or complications occurs and death occurs after tubectomy done? So, as far as consent is concerned, usually few of our friends have a habit, if they feel that next pregnancy could be dangerous for this patient and without consent, they will go with a sterilization operation. It is not at all advisable because it is not immediate danger to the life of patient if the next pregnancy is not going to be happen very next day. So, you cannot go with uh, uh, without consent as far as female sterilization operation is concerned. So, consent is very much must. In one of the cases it was happened, uh, when patient came to know that her uh, tubal ligation was done, cons prior consent was not taken, counseling was not done, and case was filed. So, doctor had a argument that next pregnancy was very much, uh, could have been very much dang uh, dangerous, but court didn't uh, consider this, and uh, case was decided in favor of patient. So, without consent, never to entertain uh, this uh, female sterilization operation. As far as failure part is concerned, there are so many cases decided in favor of doctor. Because court also accept failure rate of 3 to 4 per 1000 surgery. But at that point of time, a court will take, uh, will take in, uh, into consideration that did you take utmost care at the time of uh, surgery so our operative note should be very much uh, up to date. So how you proceed with that very surgery, pre-operative investigation, operative note and post-operative care. And in spite of all the uh, proper care, if operation fails and case is filed, there are so many chances uh, for us to be out of this problem. So failure of operation and possibility of failure of operation, if we have mentioned in our consent paper, then also it becomes one more good defense. As far as complication part is concerned, for not for uh, tubal ligation, for any uh, uh, treatment, any surgery, if complications happen, they are potential cases as far as uh, litigation is concerned. And patient is free, patient party is free to uh, 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 show you either for compensation or for any criminal action or so. So in case of complication, Related to female sterilization, it is one more area. And of course, it is very rare. But if at all death happens, then it is also one more area as far as this litigation part is concerned. 
But I would like to mention very uh, two very interesting cases. In one case, <coughs> only they could operate right-sided tube. For any reason, they couldn't operate left-sided tube as uh, there was some uh, dense addition also. And they discharge patient. In discharge card also, they mentioned <coughs> that operation was successful and certificate of that kind are also issued to the patient. When one tube was not operated naturally, after one year, patient became pregnant. Patient continued pregnancy and <coughs> delivered one more baby. And she was worried because she had already two female children. And this time also she had one more female child. So she was worried. It was her third delivery. So as far as government uh, benefits are concerned, in few of the state is mentioned, that it will be available with two deliveries only. So she was worried that it is third delivery. So she will be denied with all the benefit. So she approached government and she asked for compensation. Uh, but government as per uh, insurance scheme, they offered only 30,000. So patient was aggrieved and patient filed a case. And in court of law, case was decided in favor of patient and uh, compensation was granted in 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 one more other case uh, it, it happened it was her seventh uh, delivery and after delivery cesarean uh, this uh, tubal ligation was done and again this operation also uh, uh, went failed and she was pregnant again and in that very judgment uh, surgeon couldn't convince court that she took utmost care at the time of uh, doing surgery of this uh, particular patient as far as female sterilization part is concerned. And in this very funny, uh, compensation was awarded to the patient and patient party. So compensation awarded to the patient, that is mother, is 10 lakh rupees. And to that very baby, 10,000 rupees per month till she attains age of majority. So this judgment came in very, in very recent uh, past. So with this type of judgment, carry home message is our operative note should be very much updated and pre-operative investigation, operative note and post-operative care. We should be in a position to convince court that we had taken utmost care. If we can convince court, there are so many cases decided in favor of doctors also in case of failure of uh, uh, female sterilization. So nothing to worry that way. And <clears throat> to end, and again, my humble appeal to endorse my candidature for post of President Foxy election year 2024. In month of May, all the society will have to uh, go with uh, a nomination. Uh, Foxy will send you a letter or mail rather. And you will have to endorse, I mean, uh, go with uh, 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 this uh, 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 endorsement is concerned uh, to endorse my candidature. And <clears throat> as far as Dr. Asaj's candidature is concerned, she is going for chairperson food, drugs, and medico surgical equipment committee, Foxy. In that, only society will vote or any other eligible voter will vote. It is not general election. But again, she will have also be nominated from your society. So in month of me, uh, May, for me, for president, and for ASHA, for chairperson, food, <laughs> drugs, and medical equipment, surgical committee, you will have to nominate. And in month of August, from 1st to 10th, it will be my election, that is office bearers election. And in month of August, 15 to 25, election of chairperson. So you all are requested to vote for both of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Any Dr. comments? Pandey. Any question? We are still. We have some time. We can go with few question or any comments. We always welcome. Doctor Sima is one here. Question, Anupam sir. sir is also there. Anybody else has any question? You can please proceed. Uh, yes, ma'am. One question, ma'am. If ectopic pregnancy occurs, sir, after the operation, so yeah. how to deal with that? So uh, I mentioned convince? during my talk also. It is. It is one of the complication. And uh, at the time of discharge, I mentioned during talk also, I mean the discussion also, you will have to mention that there are 
very little possibility but possibility of failure and possibility of ectopic pregnancy and if at all you miss your period you are advised to uh, report hospital immediately so if you have mentioned like this and if patient doesn't come to you well in time and something goes wrong then it becomes a contributory negligence on part of patient if patient misses period and if patient comes to you and with investigation or your clinical examination you can come to know that it is a case of ectopic pregnancy and you can guide them properly how to go or how to deal with that very um, part but if at all it happens then patient is free to go for litigation patient may sue you but if you have all this record as far as instruction given in uh, discharge card is concerned then it becomes good defense thank you sir yes Seema, ma'am, you are there. If you wish to say something, Anupam sir, if you are there, you wish to say something. Vartika, ma'am. Any comments? Otherwise, any suggestions? So we can improve our webinar in future. Vartika, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, welcome. Sir, your series Happy Learning always teaches us, and uh, we wish you and Asha, ma'am, all the success and. Uh, it was really uh, knowing in the panel and you explained such, you know, practical points so nicely to us, which we all face in our day-to-day -day practices. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. Thank you, Asha, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, sir, officially, thank I you. thank our chief guest, guest of honor, convene coordinators, our speaker, Seema, ma'am, the chairpersons of whom Vartika ma'am is still present, Anupam sir, and all our panelists for taking active part and all our delegates who have actually made the program successful. I also thank Corona Remedies and Teeth Shah for actually being our academic partners and smoothening the whole flow of the program and making it possible providing the platform and making it possible. Thanks yes. a lot. Yes. Hope uh, to see you Dr. again Dr. next Asha, week. Yes, uh, Seema, Seema, Seema Madam is still there, if she is available, and we can have some comments or good suggestion to improve our program in future. Sir, I asked Seema, her, Madam. but uh, she isn't speaking. She isn't speaking, Anupam? I asked her. Anupam? Okay, then we can uh, conclude our webinar with thanks thank to you, all, sir. including Corona. Thank you, Tirth, Vartika ma'am, ma Rakhi ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Namaskar, Shubh Ratri. Good night, ma'am. Good, Good night. Happy learning. Good night, sir. Okay, okay ma'am. I am ending this session. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs>